Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna do a video about beginning makeup steps. I know that it can be really hard to get into makeup. Sometimes because we're in the beauty community, we forget that there are people that want to learn steps from the beginning and this video is for you guys. So I hope that you guys find this video helpful and let's get right into it. Oh, hello, hello, welcome back. The first thing that I wanna start with is skincare. I'm not gonna go really into depth with skincare because this is about makeup, but I also wanna include a little bit of skincare because a lot of us are trying to work on hyperpigmentation or like acne prone skin. So I think that it's important to include how you're supposed to apply certain things before you put your makeup on because that can affect the way that your foundation looks if you don't apply your skincare correctly. Let's talk about some skincare. So, okay guys, so I have one of my skincare products here. This is the Polish Choice, 2% um, BHA salicylic acid. I just put it directly on my skin. Everything that you put on your face, you wanna at least let it sit for like a minute. When you try to apply all the products at once and you don't let it like seep into your skin, number one, it's not gonna be as effective. And number two, it can create like a weird texture on your skin. So you wanna make sure that it seeps in first so that you're not just piling a bunch of products on top of each other before they even dry. Then I would apply my moisturizer. And then after moisturizer, you want to apply your sunscreen that's the order that you want to do it in sunscreen is last and then after your sunscreen that's when you put on your primer so i was confused about these steps for a while i don't know if anyone else was maybe that's just me being slow but i just want to include this because maybe somebody else out there doesn't know what order to put these products on your face so you just want to make sure sunscreen is the last and Sunscreen is a whole nother subject because it can be really hard to find sunscreen that goes with your makeup But this sun bum is really good and also um, Sephora sells one by super goop that doesn't really mess with your makeup either So I like those too, but sunscreen is super super important, especially if you want to get rid of like dark marks and stuff Okay, that's enough preaching about sunscreen <laughs> now that we have skincare out of the way I want to talk about eyebrows lately. I've been using an eyebrow pencil one that I really like is this micro brow pencil. This one is from Morphe, color I think chocolate mousse. I like to just kind of follow the natural shape of my brow. Try to follow that shape if you like it. And you can always play around with it and clean it up with concealer after you're done if you feel like you made some mistakes. I like to brush out my eyebrows just across like this. I don't really like to brush them up. I don't really like that look. Brows are like subjective, like Everyone likes something different. At least try to choose a color that doesn't look harsh on your face because eyebrows really frame your whole face and they can kind of make the difference between looking um, nice and looking like a little mean or looking a little crazy. So you don't want to mess that up. A little micro brow pencil I think is really good for beginners. So I just kind of like to start at the base and follow the shape. and make my tail longer. And I don't really like to start directly at the beginning. And after I make that line, I just use a spoolie to go through my brows. And I might darken it a little bit more again. And then I just go for the top. And same thing, just follow kind of the natural shape of my brow. And I use a spoolie just to make it look a little bit more natural. Towards the front, I go lighter and try to make my strokes like a little bit more upward. You just need to kind of go back and forth and see where you need to add or maybe use your spoolie to clean it up. Okay, so I did the other one off camera because I needed to like, it's a struggle. You, you guys didn't need to see me do my struggle brow. so. I think I want to make this arch a little bit higher and clean up the bottom and top lines. So this is where you can like really clean it up, especially if you haven't had a chance to like get your eyebrows threaded or waxed or plucked, whatever you do. So it's concealer time. So for concealer, I like to use something that's like a little bit um, lighter than my complexion, but not too light. I use the Huda Beauty Overachiever Concealer in the color Peanut Butter. This is a really light highlight color, but I do like the consistency of it. So I like to use that, and then I, used to, I like to put in a pump of my regular color foundation. I like to use a flat shader brush like this, or concealer brush, 
So something just flat and kind of like a little bit rounded. So I'm gonna start like towards the middle of my brow and then I'm gonna feather it out towards the front. Because if you start at the front, sometimes you're gonna have too much product there and we don't want that. So I'm gonna start here. and go towards the front. So I kind of have like my shape there and I'm just like enhancing the shape with the concealer. This isn't like a must do step. You can leave it just like this if you want to, but I do like to have it look a little bit sharper. And I like to drag down the concealer and then blend it. So you want to get like close, like as close as you can to the lines that you drew with the pencil and then blend it out. And if you're really scared of this process, you can just use a darker color and that way if you make any mistakes, it won't be as visible. I like to do the top just to really clean it up and I like to go in with like a more skin shade. So brows are done. Yeah, so like you kind of just want to make sure that they're on the same level they're not always going to be like the same shape exactly but they're close enough for me and i'm happy with it you're doing your skincare you don't really want to get the product in your brows because it can make it hard for the pencil to glide on top of your brows or like the skin right under it let's talk about primers primers are really important because they just prime your skin for foundation basically it's giving you a smooth base depending on what the primary you got is for sometimes they're hydrating sometimes they're smoothing so when you're picking the primer make sure you know what your concerns are do you want to de-emphasize your pores a smoother base or hydration in your skin I really like using the luminous silk canvas primer this one is in the liquid form it's much more beginner friendly um, another good one is the uh, YSL Touche Clock um, this one is a good one but it's more one of those silicone primers that sometimes people don't like but I've used this one for a while and it's really good at smoothing your skin so I like this one for that also okay now that we have primer on the next thing we want to do is talk about foundations I really like to match foundations to my chest um, because that's something that you can see right away when it doesn't match. It's the closest part to your face. So you want to make sure that your, your neck and your chest to kind of match and choose a color that's sort of in between. So for me, I, I like to either go a shade, like one shade darker, as I usually highlight, or I kind of just go with my foundation shade. So just like primers, you want to think about, do I need a foundation that is matte? Do I need one that's dewy? Um, like what do you want your final product to look like and also you want to think about your skin concerns it's really important to choose one that works for you for me I have oily skin so I usually like to go towards a more matte foundation or a natural or satin type of finish foundation I'm gonna be using one of my favorite foundations it's actually not a matte finish I think this is a satin finish or a natural finish foundation. I really like this one because it gives me a healthy complexion and it's easy to blend out and it looks really natural. So with this like type of finish, it's hard to get your face looking cakey. So I'm gonna also put some other foundations that I would recommend for um, that are beginner friendly that I used to use a lot. Um, there's one by Kiss that I really love that you can get in the beauty supply store and they have a bunch of color colors for like women of color they have a bunch of different undertones so that one is one of my favorites um, I actually used it one year for my birthday and it looked better than some of my expensive foundations so I'm definitely gonna try to find a clip to show you what that looks like another really important step about foundation is the tools you apply it with I think the most beginner friendly way to do your foundation is with a beauty blender brushes are cool too but I think sometimes they take a little bit more practice so this is like the beauty blender from the beauty blender company and this is a dirty one this is from um, e.l.f. This is the e.l.f. Camo Sponge. This one is super good. It really blends out your foundation really nicely. You want to make sure that when you're using your beauty blender that it's like damp. Like wet it completely, wring it out, and then use a paper towel to just kind of blot off the excess. I have my damp beauty blender. You don't need a lot of foundation. So I like to just do kind of like one pump for each cheek. And I like to do like half a pump for my chin and forehead. I think it's always a good idea to start off with less and then put on more if you need it but remember we're also going to put on concealer so you don't need 
a lot. And this foundation doesn't dry down quickly, so I don't need to work super fast, but I like to kind of spread it with my concealer brush. And I like to go in with a beauty blender. Concealers, you can either go with your skin tone shade or you can go with a shade that is like one to two shades lighter than your skin tone. I would say stick to one to two shades lighter than your skin tone, especially if you're a beginner because if you try to do anything lighter than that, it'll be too much of a contrast and you may not know how to balance it out properly. If you don't want to highlight, just go with your foundation shade. I really like the Pat McGrath. This is expensive though, but this is more of a matte finish. I also love the L'Oreal Infallible Concealer. This is a really good drugstore concealer. I love the e.l.f. Camo Concealer. This is really good as well. You also have to think about what formula your concealer is. So if it's hydrating, you may not have to blend it out right away. You might want to let it sit for a little bit more under your eyes, but if it's like a matte concealer, you kind of need to work more quickly with it. This is more matte, so I'm kind of gonna place it and then blend it out within a few seconds. So for placement, I kind of like to just go directly under the eye and down the sides of my nose. And what I like to do is kind of blend out the edges and then work my way where I want most of the coverage to be. I also like to put my concealer over my eyes because I have pigmented lids and instead of doing an eyeshadow, I just put it on top of my eyelids and I also use powder. I'm gonna put another layer on top of this just because I still see some darkness here, but um, not everybody needs that amount of coverage, so one layer might be enough for you. Okay, now that I have the coverage that I like under my eyes, I'm gonna apply some concealer to different areas of my face. I wanna highlight my chin, and I also have like hollows here, so I like to highlight my laugh line so that they don't look as sunken in. And I also like to highlight my forehead just a tiny bit. It's all up to you where you want to put your concealer. It's time for powders. For powders, I like to go with, an, with a translucent powder. I really think that the Laura Mercier translucent powder in Honey is a really great powder. I also like the Beauty Bakery powder. That's not bad. And the Fendi powder is good as well. And I just you'd like to use my Beauty Blender to put this on. And I like to top off the excess on my hand so that it's not really cakey under your eyes. So this is on one side. I like to flip it over to the other side without the powder just to go back in under my eyes and make sure that there's no creases. Okay. So I just go in with a light layer and layer on top of it after this first layer. I'm gonna do the same thing for my laugh lines and my chin. The next step is to bronze slash contour. So I like to use a bronzer as like my contour and bronzing in one step. And I like to use like a tapered kind of fluffy brush so that you can blend easily. And I think it's easiest to start with powders. I think creams are a little bit harder and I think this is just an easy step that you can add after you're done with your foundation. So I like to start where my cheeks are a little bit more hollow. And I don't go in with a lot because you wanna build it up. And you can go in a circular motion. Like here is very subtle, but it adds some more color back to the face. I like to apply some to my forehead as well. And you just wanna be like light-handed with it because you don't want it to look too harsh against um, the foundation shade and sometimes I just kind of go over my highlighted areas just a little bit to kind of help blend everything together. So 
So for eyeliner, I like to use this Anastasia Beverly Hills Water Cream color and this is in the color jet these are good because they kind of last a long time so i like to take a good amount on an angled brush i think the only thing that'll make this easier is practice but i like to start kind of close to my lash line and i like to start at the outer corner because when you start at the inner corner like that's when you can mess up easier so i like to start at my outer corner and kind of make small flicks As long as you start small, you won't have an issue. How I like to apply my lashes is with this Kiss Lash Adhesive. I love the brush on this. I like to just take some on the brush and I like to apply it like eyeliner. And make sure to get this inner part as well because that's the part that never wants to stick also apply it to the lash as well. I give it a few seconds to dry and get tacky. Then I apply it with my fingers. You can also use tweezers to make it easier for you. The shorter pieces go to your inner corner and the longer pieces go to the outer corner. Some lashes don't have that and I hate those lashes <laughs> because they kind of look really awkward. But these do and these are like great for beginners. I'm gonna like try to place it in the middle of my lash and then connect the front and the back it looks kind of good there, so I'm gonna do the back. And I'm gonna try to get it as close to my actual lash line as possible. So it takes a mascara to kind of just mesh the two together. And now that we have lashes done, the last step is lipstick. If you're my skin tone, I think going with a dark brown is really good or something close to your natural lip color is always a good option. And for lining the lips, it's pretty simple. Just kind of follow your lip shape and just don't go too far outside of the lines. And I like these types of pencils that are automatically rolled up. This is one from Kiss, so you don't have to keep sharpening it, so it makes it really easy. First, I like to go in with a matte lip color as my base, something nudey. And then on top of that, I like to go in with um, a peach colored lipstick. And gloss is optional, but I love gloss, so I'm going to put some gloss on top of that. Okay guys, so that was it for the beginner's look. I hope that you guys found my tips and steps helpful. If there's any other questions that you have, you can always leave them in the comments below. Let me know what your problems um, are when you're beginning makeup and like things that you have questions about. If you've already been doing makeup for a long time, let me know what you struggled with in the beginning. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.